guys, this is Blake with the Three Hand Hunter channel and I'm here to show you the Benris Type 1 reissue watch. This watch is an amazing timepiece. I'm so excited to show it to you today and I wanna give a special thanks to my buddy Bob who loaned this one to me. Um, I've, got, I've got a lot to say about this watch in particular and the cool thing is I'm gonna be matching it up with the Persista PRS 18A. So don't go anywhere. I'm going to I'm going to save that for a little bit later. But I just want to say a big special thanks to Bob. Also, if you like to see content like this, um please subscribe to the channel. It's free to subscribe to the channel and also click the like button if you do like it and leave a comment down below, especially if you've owned a mil spec type of watch like this particular one, which is the mil spec W5071 seven design if you've owned a watch that's kind of like this like the persista you know jump in the comments below let us know what you have to say and then like i said subscribe to the channel i'm just trying to grow the channel and in order to do that comments help likes help and definitely if you subscribe it's all free to do that so thank you very much all right let's get into um let's get into this beautiful benaris and let's talk a little bit about the history and very rich history at that you know this watch, well, let's actually take a step back and say Benris was actually founded in 2021. And they're really well known for their military issued style watches. A lot of the old field watches, military field issued watches are Benris. But this would arguably be uh, between the Type 1 and the Type 2, which I'll talk about both of them here in a second. They're arguably the most recognizable and most famous Benris watches. Well, Benris itself died back in the quartz crisis, but the watch brand was revived recently. And that's obviously been very popular with, um, with many watch brands as of late. You know, you get these, these uh, watch companies that are revived by you know, an investor or an individual and they revive the brand and try to make it as authentic as possible. You know, They've gone to great lengths. Benris has gone to great lengths with this particular watch, and I'm impressed. There's a few things that I'm not impressed about, but overall, I think this is an awesome watch. Um, but let's talk about like, just kind of like some of the unique features of this watch. So first of all, you're, you're gonna notice the case um, is a very unique shape. It's an asymmetrical case. The, the right side, you notice how the case goes out to really protect the crown. Um, that's very similar to the Persista right here, and you're gonna notice the similarities, and I'll get into that here in a, in a, in a, uh, in a minute. But that's because it's a mil-spec, you know, military specification design uh, of the 50717, and you'll notice that on the back of the case, that's also written right um right at the very top so you can see that that mil spec design that this is based off of there's a lot of different watches out there that have used this asymmetric case whether in chronograph or a three-hand function that you see here so um they're very popular and and rightfully so they're really cool um i wanted to talk a little bit about the case finishing it is a bead blasted case now bead blasted one of the things I love about a bead blasted case is the fact that it is very tactical. It, it, it takes the shine off and, um, and it cuts out on reflection. So when you're in the military, you're hiding in the jungles or in the, in the thick of it, uh, having a bead blasted case, you know, over a PVD case, which would be black, um, you know, is, is preferred because you, again, less reflection. Um, the feeling of this watch, I mean, with these really, nice cutouts here, or not cutouts rather, but sharp edges. It's almost refined to a point. And I, I read a review, it's kind of like a pebble that's been sitting in the ocean for like 20 years or 30 years or whatever, or hundred years. It's just so comfortable. You can tell just by picking up this watch, it is just going to be super comfortable as a result. And it, and it truly is the finishing um, of this, of this case is pretty amazing. All right. I want to talk a little bit about the movement because the movement is where the controversy starts for this particular watch. And this movement that you see in here, well, you won't see in uh, this particular watch because I'm not going to open it up. Um, it is a ETA two eight, not 28, 24. It's a two eight. Uh, oh geez. Now I can't remember the, the, it, Basically, it's 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 a hacking hand widening, but it's a date date version, day date version. So there is a ghost date. 
and the movement inside here is actually made for a smaller watch. Now, there's there's articles written about this, and I'm just thinking about the watch itself and about when it was actually when it was actually created and and released. It was during the COVID, you know, pandemic crisis that 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 the world was going through. And my assumption is, and this is again, this is just an assumption, that it's probably had to do with what was available at the time. But it is an ETA movement, and it, it's a very you know good running ETA movement. The only problem that this watch has, in my opinion, is it has the ghost date, which was, um, you know, Benris. This reissue got a lot of. Um, uh, uh, backlash because of that. Now the type two dial, which is a different dial. Um, it, it looks more of like a field watch. This is your more traditional dive watch layout. The type two dial is more of a field watch layout that has the Arabic numbers. And I'll show you a picture of it, Arabic numbers and 24 hour military numerals. That actually has a so prod movement. And I believe it does not have the ghost date. So with the type one, this limited edition, it does. And that's something that you have to keep in mind when you buy the watch. It doesn't bother me. I have watches with ghost dates. Um, actually, I believe this Persista does as well. Uh, no, not this Persista. I have another Persista that does as well. But, it, you know, it's something just, just to keep in mind if you go out and you look for this watch. Now, a couple other things that they did not stick with the original. And they made it more of a, a modern design built, you know, for, for the modern enthusiast. You'll notice that the crystal is a dome sapphire crystal. It's a beautiful dome sapphire fire crystal, by the way. Um, very, very legible. It's, it's, it's super well done. Um, and you'll also notice that the acrylic, or excuse me, the once aluminum bezel insert is now an, it is now an acrylic bezel insert. Or I believe it's acrylic or... Um, it is a sapphire insert. I'm, I'm, it, it's a sapphire bezel insert, I guess, and it used to be acrylic. That's what I read. But as, as you know, it's just going to be something that's going to be more resistant to wear. Now, I am a fan, just so you know, I am a fan of aluminum bezel inserts. I like the way that they patina with age. I like it when they get a little bit of you know scratching or scarring, but that's a personal preference. You know, a, a watch like this Benris is going to look good for a longer period of time. It's going to look like new. Um, you know, that's what a lot of people prefer. For me, I don't mind a little bit of wear and tear on my watches. It, it gives them character, if you will. A um, couple other things that I want to mention about the reissue. So the reissue has actually removable spring bars. The the original version has 19.5 millimeter fixed spring bars. Now this this or this reissue they make it 20 millimeter which is nice because it allows you to swap out you know straps very easily in modern times right and you're not just you know required to use some sort of nato strap where the original issue had fixed spring bars now uh, a couple other things that i wanted to mention the new version this version right here you'll notice that it has this unsigned crown well, the crown in the original has this dimple because of the way that the, the watch is constructed. This is a this is a, a watch case that you can actually remove the case back and pull out the movement, the very small movement that's in there. The original does not have, you cannot do that. It, it's actually, it looks just like this, but the case back you cannot pull out. It's a mono, I believe it's called a mono clock case where you actually have to pull out the stem pull out, pull off the bezel and also remove the, the crystal to get to the movement. So it's very, it looks very similar to the original, um, uh, versions, but the crown you can see here is smooth. There's no dimple and it, cause it was a two, two crown, two piece crown system. So you could pull it out, break it off, I believe. And so you can pull out the movement and that obviously you wouldn't need it with this, this new version. Now, speaking of, uh, speaking of this version, it does keep with the original specs where you have a non clicking, just a resistance bezel. And, and I'll tell you what, this is the best resistant bezel I've felt ever. It, you, you, you're not going to be able to knock this and move it, not very easily. 
but it also, you know, it's, it's so smooth and it's got great traction. So if you're going, if you're trying to, you know, measure time, it's, it's going to be, it's going to be perfect. Now, a um, couple things I want to mention about this dial really quick before I show you the persistent and show you the differences between those two. Um, you know, a lot of people would say, well, that's a sterile dial. It's very basic. It's your basic dive uh, style dial. It is um, very similar to like what you would find on a Rolex or, you know, many other, you know, dive style watches. But notice those loom, the loom markers, or uh, excuse me, the, um, the markers, the one, the two, the four, the five, seven, eight, and uh, 10 and 11 markers. Now you'll notice the circles, but notice that little white protruding uh, stem that comes out of each of the markers. That makes it really, really a unique look. And it's something that is unique to this particular, um, this particular Benris as well. Uh, I do wanna point out that it does have these fence post, um, fence post minute and hour markers and for those of you that know me, I'm a very big military watch legibility fan, and I love black dials with white hands. It is by far the most, to me, the most legible watch you can possibly have on your wrist. Quickly look down at a glance and see exactly what time it is. These, you'll notice that the, the stick hands or the fence post hands, excuse me, on the Persista are much skinnier than the ones on the, uh, on the Benris. And also the loom's a little bit different. Like um, the Persista has this one big solid loom block that's on the white hand. In the Benris, you'll notice that the, it's it's actually uh, portioned out or portioned out. So there's two loom blocks in there on that minute hand and one on the hour hand. Really very easy to read, very legible, and it does use BWG9 Super Luminova. Um, one of the other things I wanted to mention just really quick before I, I get into the differences between these two watches is the Benris is also assembled in the USA. And the original, um, and it, this is according to the Benris website, 1600 approximately type one and type two class A and B versions were produced to the elite forces in the Vietnam War era from 1972 to 1980. It was never available to the public until now. Now you can get these obviously in the public. These are limited edition watches, these Benrises, all right? Um, and I, I, I mentioned type one and type two dials. That's the one that you see here, type one. Type two has the field type of dial. Also, class A and class B were the Lumino, Luminova versions and the, uh, the tritium field. And the tritium field, they, they made two different ones because if you were on a submarine and you had the tritium field uh, uh, watch, it could mess with the electronics. So they made two, class one and class two. Very interesting. I, I, I find the history behind these watches so fascinating. But now I wanna show you the difference between these two particular watches. Now, the case shape uh, again, the mil-spec 50717 is a very popular military specification type of case. From what I understand, Persista, now this is a reissue as well from Eddie Platts over at Time Factors from years ago. These are very hard to find nowadays, these Persistas, but you can usually find one, at least in 2022, you can find a used one for maybe around 500 US dollars, where this watch, if you buy this from the Benris website, is going to be 1700 US dollars. Right now, this also comes with a Miota, so it's not going to be a, a you know a um, ETA movement or a Swiss movement, but it's still really very well made watch, and and I would say arguably a little bit more rare at this point. But the Persista, if you find an original copy, they only made them in I believe eighty eight and eighty nine, and I don't know how many of them are, were issued to the British military. But you'll notice, I want to show you the case case differences here. Now, I've owned a Benris watch, or excuse me, a Benris homage, uh, a Carl Sacrona, I believe that's the name of it. I've owned one of those and I didn't really care for it as much as like the Benris ones and the, the MK or the Mark II um, remakes. The reason why is the bezel is different, but you notice that slope down bezel with the Benris. 
Notice the persistent, the very the big difference between the persista case and the Benrus case, right? The persista, they the when the British military or um, persista made them for the British military, they put out these these protruding um, bezels to make it easier for you know an operator with you know gloves on to actually manipulate the bezel. Like the bezel for me, you know, it, it's actually it's 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 you know you can move it. There's a lot of resistance. Imagine if you have gloves on. Imagine how difficult it is to to try to. To try to manipulate that and by the way like i said this is um you know very 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 well done for a resistance bezel in a uh, bezel but with the persista you'll notice with the persista it is very sharp 120 click no back play probably one of the better you know bezel plays i've ever felt but notice the case how similar the case itself is to the to the benris you have the same asymmetric protruding case shape and exactly the same case size. Okay, and you can see that the persista might be slightly thicker. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and let me grab my calipers and we're gonna try to, we're gonna measure these. All right, so now that I have the calipers, let's go ahead and measure these, these two particular watches here. I'm gonna put the the bezel back with the Persista. And we'll start with the Persista. You'll notice that the case is at a 41.2, and that's obviously off the side, not with the crown. Now with the Benris, you can see it's just slightly bigger at 41.7, right? The thickness for the Benris, and this is with that really, very, very beautiful um, uh, dome sapphire crystal is 14.7. But really, if you, if you take out the crystal, this, this watch is not very, it does not feel very thick on your, wa on your wrist, excuse me. It's more like, you know, maybe 13 millimeters. But with the Persista, it does stick out a little bit. I should probably show you the case back as well between the two. But you can see it's 12.9, 13 millimeters, right? So it, it says it's thicker on the, um, on the Benris, but take a look at the, if you actually look at the silhouette between the two, you can see that that Benris looks, and it does feel actually like a skinnier watch, even though it is thicker because of the, uh, because of the crystal. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the Persista, and I'm gonna do a full review of the Persista. I have not done one yet, so if you're watching this saying, oh man, I wanna see the Persista, don't worry, it's coming. It's something that I'm just a little behind on doing these. Um, and I wanna say again, if you, uh, if you like these videos, make sure you give, us, give me a thumbs up, I'd appreciate it. You know, these, are, these videos are a labor of love. Um, you know, and this is my own watch, this is my friend's watch, so. Um, not these are just very unbiased reviews. So if you like that kind of thing, make sure you do subscribe to the channel. But take a look at the case back. Here's the Persista, and you can see that the Persista actually has a screw down case back. Now this Benris also does as well, but you can see the differences between the two cases as well. All right, now let's take a look at you can see the two cases and how they look side by side. Now, one last thing I'm gonna leave you guys with before, uh, before I let you go. Um, Bob, I've talked to Bob, and, and he had uh, before, or actually at the same time that he had this Benris, he also had a Mark II, um, the Mark II, basically it's the same watch, but it was, it was made by Mark II, which is wonderful micro brand. Um, it's, they, they, they're, they're, they're out of the USA, designed out of the USA, but also everything's manufactured in Japan. And I have a Mark II watch. If you want to take a look at the, um, the Crucible, uh, review, I'll put, I'll put the link right here, but with the MK2 or the Mark II and the Benris, I asked Bob, you know, which, why, why did you sell the, the MK2? And I think what it came down to Bob, Bob, he said, well, the Benris and the MK2, the way they were manufactured and the look and the feel, very similar. 
But he also mentioned that, you know, with Benris, you get the, the heritage behind it, right? Even though this is a reissue and it's by a completely different company, just using the name, but it does have the heritage where the MK2 does not. And I think that that's going to speak a lot and say a lot to a lot of different watch enthusiasts out there. So just think about that as, um, as you are, are looking to purchase or, or acquire one of these or hunt one of these down. Now, I want to mention this before I let you go. One of the things that I, the thing that I don't, I'm going to say my cons are on this particular watch, obviously the, the, the choice in movement. Um, if I was going to hunt down one of these Benarises and these limited edition ones, I'd actually go with the Type 2 because it has a Soprod um, uh, PO24 and it has no ghost date. And by the way, I'm sorry, the Type 1 ETA was a 28, it wasn't a 2824, I believe it was a 28 something else. And maybe it is. But anyway, um, this ghost date is not something that that I would I would search for the type two dial anyway. And then also one of the other things is the, the, the price they're at $1,700. Yes. It's made in the USA. Yes. Um, it, or assembled in the USA, excuse me. Yes. It's Benris. I dig all that, but the price is a little high. I think you can find them on, you know, used for closer to a thousand us dollars. And I think that is a very good, that's a that's a very good um, uh, uh, say deal, but that <laughs> these are watches. <laughs> they're, they're they're really good deal, but I think that's a better uh, proposition uh, for me as an enthusiast. But really, this Persista, um, based on you know it's, it's 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 scarcity now, and if you can even find one, this is probably my would be my watch of choice. It's just finding and hunting one down. Anyway. If you made it this far, uh, let me introduce myself. My name is Blake. I'm a bit of a watchaholic. And, you know, if you made it this far, I can pretty much guarantee you're going to be one too. So uh, thank you so much for, for tuning in. Thanks for spending your time with me. And I'll see you guys in the next video.